picture our human ancestors teetering on the brink of extinction, a mere 900,000 years ago. A recent study suggests their numbers dwindled to a shocking 1,280 individuals. The culprit. Perhaps a chilling period of global cooling. But here's the twist, not all of the scientific community is buying it. Critics argue that estimating population changes from such a distant past is a daunting, if not impossible task. The study's precision is under the microscope, and its findings are being hotly debated. In a recent video, we described a new study which suggested 99% of our forefathers wiped out nearly a million years ago. However, there is skepticism about the claim that our ancestors were nearly extinct. Could the lives of the world's 8 billion people have depended on the fortitude of just 1,280 human ancestors, who nearly went extinct 930,000 years ago? That is the conclusion of a study that used genetic analysis modeling to determine that our forefathers were on the verge of extinction for nearly 120,000 years. But scientists who were not involved in the study slammed the claim, claiming that there was pretty much unanimous agreement among population geneticists that it was not convincing. So scientists denied that human ancestors may have faced extinction at some point, due to a population bottleneck. In fact, experts question whether the study could be so precise, given the extraordinarily difficult task of estimating population changes so long ago, and emphasized that similar methods had not detected this massive population crash. It is extremely difficult to extract DNA from the few fossils of human relatives dating back hundreds of thousands of years, making it difficult to learn much about them. Scientists can now analyze genetic mutations in modern humans and use a computer model that works backwards in time to infer how populations changed, even in the distant past, thanks to advances in genome sequencing. The study, which was published in the journal Science, examined the genomes of over 3,150 modern-day humans. The researchers created a model to crunch the numbers, and it was discovered that the population of breeding human ancestors shrank to around 1,280 around 930,000 years ago. According to the scientists, about 98.7% of human ancestors were lost at the start of the bottleneck. Our forefathers were on the verge of extinction and had to band together to survive. According to the study, the bottleneck, which was possibly caused by a period of global cooling, lasted until 813,000 years ago. Then there was a population boom, possibly caused by a warming climate, and control of fire, according to the study. According to the researchers, inbreeding during the bottleneck could explain why humans have a significantly lower level of genetic diversity than many other species. According to the study, the population squeeze may have even contributed to the separate evolution of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans, all of which are thought to have split from a common ancestor around that time. This could also explain why there are so few fossils of human ancestors from the time period. Moreover, scientists suggested that the control of fire, as well as the climate shifting to be more hospitable for human life, could have contributed to a rapid population increase around 813,000 years ago. From this bottleneck, Neanderthals and modern humans diverged at least 800,000 years ago, substantially earlier than indicated by most DNA-based estimates, according to new research. The novel finding opens a new field in human evolution because it evokes many questions, such as the places where these individuals live, how they overcame the catastrophic environmental changes, and whether natural selection during the bottleneck, has accelerated the evolution of human brain. Remarkably, the population bottleneck coincided with dramatic changes in climate during what's known as the mid-Pleistocene transition, the research suggested. Glacial periods became longer and more intense, leading to a drop in temperature and very dry climatic conditions. Whatever caused the proposed bottleneck may have been limited in its effects on human populations outside the Homo sapiens lineage, or its effects were short-lived, researchers said. Therefore, proposed bottleneck needs to be tested against human and archaeological evidence. In fact, these ancient humans survived not only a population bottleneck, but also full pole reversal 790,000 years ago that resulted in planet Earth being bombarded by ultraviolet radiation from space. 
new research, published in Science Advances, analyzed dental evolutionary rates across different hominin species, focusing on early Neanderthals. It shows that the teeth of the ancestors of the Neanderthals, diverged from the modern human lineage earlier than previously assumed. Indeed, any divergence time between Neanderthals and modern humans, younger than 800,000 years ago would have entailed an unexpectedly fast dental evolution in the early Neanderthals. However, archaeologists have discovered fossils dating from the time period Africa, Europe, and Asia, suggesting that our ancestors were more widespread than such a bottleneck would allow. Therefore, according to some researchers, the hypothesis of a global crash does not fit with archaeological and human fossil evidence. In response, the study's authors stated that hominins living in Eurasia and East Asia at the time may not have contributed to modern humans' ancestry. The ancestor of all modern humans is the ancient small population. We wouldn't have the traces in our DNA otherwise. Other researchers are extremely skeptical that the researchers took into account the statistical uncertainty inherent in this type of analysis. Because it will never be possible to use genomic analysis of modern humans to obtain such a precise number as 1280 from that long ago, emphasizing that such research typically involves wide ranges of estimates. The study's authors stated that their population range was between 1,270 and 1,300 people, a difference of only 30. Yet, the data used in the study had been around for years, and previous methods for inferring past population sizes had not detected any such near-extinction event. The study's authors simulated the bottleneck using some of these previous models, spotting their population crash this time. Meanwhile, because the extinction models should have detected the bottleneck the first time, it is difficult to be convinced by the conclusion, and a fairly unanimous response among population geneticists, people who work in this field, that the paper was unconvincing. According to the source and sink model of human evolution, the origin of the Neanderthal lineage has been largely explained by the gradual accumulation of Neanderthal distinctions throughout time, a process that has been coined as accretion. Despite their ability to cope with a variety of environments, Neanderthal ancestors would have had problems surviving in extreme glacial conditions. Glacial interglacial cycles would have led to a pattern of periodical abandonment of northern regions into southern refuges and subsequent recolonization of higher latitudes when conditions ameliorated. This habitat tracking dispersals, together with an important number of local extinctions would have played a major role in shaping these populations, leading to repeated genetic bottlenecks, and subsequent reduction of the variability of the Neanderthal lineage. Based on these findings, researchers proposed a source and sink model, where the variability of the fossil hominin samples in early and middle Pleistocene Europe, was explained as a result of repeated population dispersals, fragmentation, and recombination of surviving populations inside Europe. The driving force behind this demographic patterning would be the climatic fluctuations, which would also define the windows of opportunity for immigration episodes from Southwest Asia. Source populations would have lived in those parts of Southern Europe, where hominins could have survived glacial periods. Sink populations would have been in those areas in higher latitudes that were only suitable for occupation in warm interglacials and often, they would have depended upon source populations for recruitment to maintain a stable occupation. When environmental conditions deteriorated, many sink populations would have become extinct and or retreated to the southern refugia where they would have mixed with the resident groups. This recombination would explain the high morphological variability maintained by European populations throughout the Middle Pleistocene despite the demographic decline. While the European fossil record is relatively well characterized, only recently new specialized studies on old and new findings have started to contribute to a more precise picture of human evolution in Asia. As outlined in the paper, these studies expand the morphological variability known for the Pleistocene human populations of East Asia, and outline complex evolutionary scenarios, with persistence and survival of primitive lineages. The challenge to properly investigate the applicability of the source and sink model in Asia requires the identification of morphologically coherent groups where fossil samples slash specimens could be interpreted as representative of prehistoric populations or lineages, acting as portions of dynamic evolutionary units. Finally, 
With respect to the paleontology and archaeology related to Homo sapiens evolution, it of particular interest to consider the Eurasian advances in this field, during the last 25 years. The early stages of the progress were discussed in a study that related the morphological skull mosaic between Homo sapiens and Homo erectus to a continuous Homo sapiens admixing in Asia, including gene flow between Eastern and more Westerly Asia. As regards the morphological distinction between sapiens and erectus the study recognized them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus, in accordance with their overlapping morphology. Despite early reservations among phylogeneticists with experience beyond Homo sapiens, the molecular out-of-Africa hypothesis has been widely accepted among population geneticists for over 30 years. The paleontological support for the hypothesis is also questionable, a situation that has become more pronounced in recent decades as Eurasian paleontological knowledge has grown. Two molecular studies from the same laboratory played a significant role in the promotion of the out-of-Africa hypothesis 30 years ago. Despite the lack of paleontological support for it and the fact that reanalysis of the data did not favor the phylogenies that served as the foundation for the out-of-Africa hypothesis, the hypothesis gradually became a mainstay in the discussion of human evolution and dispersal. The paleontology of Homo sapiens' origin and evolution in Africa is noticeably inferior to that of Eurasia. In fact, the present reorientation of the Homo sapiens tree in conjunction with the paleontology of Homo erectus makes the period from 900,000 to 500,000 years ago highly significant for the discussion of Homo sapiens' evolution as it covers both the advent and sequel of the divergences that encompass Homo erectus, Homo antecessor, Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans. The Asian phase of Homo erectus evolution around 900,000 years ago is exemplified by the Chinese site at Yangtzean and the age, 936,000 years, of the best preserved skull excavated at this site. With regard to the Yangtzean specimen one of these studies concluded that the facial features of the fossil displayed a pattern close to modern humans, and that the assignment of the skull to Homo erectus extended the variability connected to this species. In this light and in recognition of the fossil record of Homo erectus the findings are consistent with the origin of a branch that arose within a diversifying Asian Homo erectus population which diverged into the westward-going population of Homo antecessor, which came to reside for a short period in southwest Europe, and another population, the last common ancestor, that split later into Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. According to this understanding the last common ancestor diverged further into Denisovans and Neanderthals, with Denisovans diversifying essentially in Eastern Asia, and the Sahul and Neanderthals inhabiting a large Eurasian area within which it diversified into a westerly branch, Spanish Neanderthal lineage, and a more widely spread population, Neanderthals, characterized by the mitochondrial DNA in progression from Homo sapiens 500,000 years ago. A circumstance that manifests the lasting and contemporary Eurasian presence of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. The reversal of the direction of evolution in the tree of Homo sapiens sapiens is consistent with the molecular identification of the sister group relationship between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor and a Eurasian separation into Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens 850,000 years ago within a diversifying population of Homo erectus. This underlines the Eurasian existence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, preceding the divergence between Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens. Researchers postulate that following the separation between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor 850,000, Homo sapiens diverged further into Homo sapiens and Neanderthals 800,000 years ago. The Eurasian continuity of these two lineages is underlined by the molecular diversity of Neanderthals and Denisovans. In fact, the fossil record, while sparse, did show that early human species lived in and outside Africa during the time period of 813,000 to 930,000 years ago, during the period of proposed population collapse. So did our ancestors really come this close to vanishing? The jury, it seems, is still out. In the end, our ancestors may have been on the verge of extinction at some point, but modern genomic data is very weak in inferring such an event. This was around the time that early humans began making more sophisticated tools, and stopped being mere animals chasing other animals. Nonetheless, 
it's probably one of those profound questions that we're not going to find a definitive answer. And with that tantalizing question, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our human history. Until next time, stay curious, and stay questioning.